Hey guys, this is Layla Teachers and today we'll speak about lipids, digestion and absorption. So when we speak about lipids, uh, there are four that come to mind, but three main ones. Okay, so you have TAG, which is triacylglycerol. You have FFA, which is free fatty acids. And then you have cholesterol. The fourth group is phospholipids, which I'll speak about um, in a few words later on. All right, digestion, it begins in the stomach. Uh, that's a number one, catalyzed by an acid-stable lipase. There are two types. There is the lingual lipase and then there's the gastric lipase. The tag molecules, as I said, triacylglycerol, that are less than 12 carbons, are the primary target of this enzyme. Number two is the critical process of emulsification of dietary lipids in the duodenum. Emulsification increases the surface area of the hydrophobic lipid droplets so that the digestive enzymes can act on them effectively. Now, emulsification is accomplished by two complementary mechanisms. One is the detergent properties of the bile salts that are released um, by the liver and stored in the gallbladder and the mechanical mixing due to peristalsis. Bile salts are the derivatives of cholesterol. Number three, tag molecules are acted upon by an esterase, which is pancreatic lipase. The primary products are two monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids. Number four is colipase is also secreted by the pancreas, which restores, restores activity to the lipase. Now colipase is um, secreted as a zymogen which is procolipase activated by trypsin. All right next is cholesterol esters. They are hydrolyzed by pancreatic cholesterol ester hydrolases but known as cholesterol esterases which produce cholesterol plus free fatty acids. This activity is increased in the presence of bile salts. And our last one, number six, is phospholipase A2. It cleaves phospholipids, yielding lysophospholipid. Uh, this is done by removing one fatty acid from a carbon. So for example, phosphatidylcholine will become lysophosphatidylcholine. Here you can see that lipids are unchanged in the mouth because there are no enzymes, they go to the stomach. The small intestine is the main area where there is digestion and uh, where the bile salts emulsify and the pancreatic enzymes degrade the dietary lipids. Moving on, we have CCK, which is uh, cholecystokinin. So cells in the lower duodenum and jejunum, they produce a small peptide hormone, which is CCK, in response to the presence of lipids and some partially digested proteins. Now this, it acts on the gallbladder, causing it to contract and release bile and on the exocrine cells of the pancreas, causing them to release digestive enzymes. It also decreases the gastric motility, resulting in a slower release of gastric contents into the small intestine. Other intestinal cells produce another small peptide hormone known as secretin in response to the low pH of the chyme entering this intestine. Chyme is the uh, partially digested food. Um, Secretine causes the pancreas and the liver to release a solution rich in bicarbonate. What does this do? It helps neutralize the pH of the contents, bringing them to the appropriate pH for the digestive activity by the pancreatic enzymes, which would otherwise not function if the pH was the same as that of the gastric mucosa. All right, we're done with digestion. So our primary products are free fatty acids, glycerol, cholesterol, and some remaining pieces of phospholipids. Moving on to absorption. So free fatty acids, free cholesterol, and glycerol are the primary products of lipid digestion in the jejunum. These, plus the bile salts and fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, they form mixed micelles. Now they are soluble and these particles, they approach the primary site of lipid absorption, which is the brush border of the enterocytes, which is the small intestine. Now the hydrophilic surface of the micelles 
facilitates the transport of the hydrophobic lipids to the brush border where they are absorbed. Bile salts are absorbed in the ileum. Short and medium chain length fatty acids, they do not require um, the assistance of cells for absorption by the intestinal mucosa. All right, now chylomicrons. Now the particles are released by exocytosis from the enterocytes into the lacteals, which is the lymphatic vessels originating in the villi of the small intestine. The presence of these particles in the lymph uh, after the lipid-rich meal gives it a milky appearance. This lymph is called chyle and the particles are named chylomicrons. So they follow the lymphatic system to the thoracic duct and are then conveyed to the left subclavian vein where they enter the blood. But what are chylomicrons made of? They are just the lipid components re-esterified. So the fat soluble vitamins, they um, add to the structure the same way. The two monoacylglycerols, they are turned into triacylglycerols with the help of the enzymes acyl coenzyme A, monoacylglycerol acyl transferase, and acyl coenzyme A, diacylglycerol acyl transferase with the addition of coenzyme A. The long chain fatty acids, they are converted to fatty acids. Fatty acyl coenzyme A with the help of fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase. And cholesterol is converted to cholesterol esters with the help of acyl coenzyme A cholesterol acyl transfer race. And in this structure, you have phospholipids added and amino acids giving us apolipoproteins, which are lipids and proteins together. And this chylomicron finally goes to the lymphatic system. If you're finding it difficult, don't worry, we will speak about each of these conversions in the next few videos. Lipid malabsorption, uh, it results in increased lipid in the feces, which is called steatorrhea, and it can result from two very common reasons. One is cystic fibrosis, uh, which uh, leads to poor digestion, and then steatorrhea, and the other one is a shortened bowel, which decreases the absorption and leads to steatorrhea. What is the function of lipids? The use by the tissues. So number one, lipids are a major source of energy for the body. Number two, they provide the hydrophobic barrier of cell membranes. Number three, the fat soluble vitamins have regulatory or coenzyme functions. The glycerol that is released from triacylglycerol is used almost exclusively by the liver to produce G3P, which can either enter glycolysis or gluconeogenesis. Um, so that is it for this video. I hope it was clear. I'll see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.